ever stumble upon a digital magazine? Have you heard of this one? It's called Guji Cunning. Hmm. You no worries. I'm not gonna like try to make you pronounce that right now or anything. But it translates to treasury of words, which is perfect because that's what we're diving into today. Like a whole treasure trove of Tamil literature, but like the contemporary stuff. And, you know, it's it's really more than just the stories themselves. OK, so where are we going with this? Well, it's like a window into, you know, what Tamil readers today, what's grabbing their attention like right now in this moment, what's resonating with them. I like it. A little glimpse into the contemporary literary scene. Now, I know Tamil is a language with a really rich history, obviously. But um, for those of us who, you know, maybe haven't had the chance to really dive into it, could you give us a little background, like set the stage a bit? Okay, so picture this, a language, right? But it's so old, it's considered classical with this incredible literary tradition that goes back centuries. Wow, centuries. Centuries. We're talking about a direct link to ancient history. But what's really cool is what we're looking at, this magazine, it shows us how that ancient language is still alive and thriving in the present. Okay, so we're bridging like this huge expanse of time, ancient roots, modern expression. I'm into that. Right. So what kind of stuff can we actually expect to find in this treasury of words? Okay, so think of it this way. This isn't some dusty old archive, okay? We're talking about the issue from September 22nd, 2024, so it's as current as it gets. This issue in particular has, you know, a real mix of stuff. We're talking short stories, some original, some translated from other languages, poetry. And the poetry is interesting because you see this blend of traditional styles with like a more modern voice. And then you've got essays and the essays cover everything like art, music, even philosophy. They don't hold back. So it's like a real buffet of ideas anything in there, any titles that kind of like jumped out at you? Well, yeah, there's this one article, the title immediately caught my eye. It's, oh, no, it's in Genshin Shumidama. <laughs> a continuation about the stare of Hubi won to me in Armaji. When the native say the Which, you know, in English would be something like painter Francis Newton Souza. Art terrorist. <laughs> Art terrorist. Whoa. Okay, that's not an everyday title. Who was this Souza guy? So Francis Newton Souza was an Indian painter, and he was known for this really bold style, like, imagine expressionism but mixed with these very traditional indian artistic elements and get this his first ever painting the story goes was done on a cutting board they talk about it in the article and i don't know it just really struck me a cutting board huh yeah, I like it. Yeah. it's like he was like rejecting the canvas from day one yeah exactly like a statement speaking of statements another title caught my eye it was hang on it puts you deep garn, which I think translates to the opposite butterfly effect. That's right. Okay. So we all know the butterfly effect, like the smallest action causing these huge ripples. But what's the opposite of that? See, that's what I love about this magazine. They go there. This article, it actually uses the framework of quantum mechanics. Oh, wow. Yeah, like time travel, all that, to try to explore this concept. So imagine if you could change the past, even in a tiny way, but instead of causing huge ripples, it didn't have the effect you'd expect. So, like, our actions echoing through time, but not in the way we thought they would. <laughs> okay, that's pretty wild. It makes me wonder, though, about the people behind this magazine. Like, what's their approach, you know? Did you get a sense of that at all? You know, it's funny you say that. One thing that really stood out to me was they had this letter from the editor section. Yeah. You don't see those too often anymore. Right. And it says something, you know, I don't know if it's specific to the Tamil literary scene or what, but it's interesting. Well, what do you think it says? I mean, what vibe did you get from hmm. in Tamil literature? To me, it really emphasized this idea of community and yeah. dialogue, especially in Tamil literature. Like, it's less about this one way, like, here's the information, absorb it. And much more about let's have a conversation. Let's share experiences through what we're writing and reading. So it's about that back and forth, that engagement. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I think makes Ivan Hell really fascinating. It's a platform, but for both, you know, writers who've been around and people who are just starting out. It's almost like they're creating a space, you know, for Tamil literature to kind of like breathe and grow. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, I noticed... Um, there's an article about something called Raga Harmony, which like just the name sounds interesting. But I got to be honest, I'm not super well versed in, you know, Indian classical music and all that. OK, well, picture this, right? Like imagine you could build a bridge between two totally different musical worlds, right? That's kind of what this 
violinist, L. Subramanium. He's the one who created Raga Harmony. That's what he managed to do. He created this whole system where you can seamlessly move between these like very traditional Indian ragas, you know, yeah. and Western harmonic structures. Wait, so he's like blending these musical traditions that have always been seen as like separate things. Totally. And to me, it kind of speaks to a bigger theme we've been seeing, I think, in Tamil culture in general, this real openness, you know, embracing stuff from all over the world, but without like ditching their own obviously very rich heritage. Right. Yeah, for sure. And this magazine, it kind of seems to embody that, too. Like they're showing how Tamil literature can, you know, engage with the rest of the world, be part of the conversation, but still stay true to its roots. It's like they're having this conversation about culture, but right there in the pages. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. Oh, and speaking of things in the pages, I'm remembering you mentioned earlier those serialized novels they've got in there. Oh, that's Pepper and Kamier or Kumara Incident. Mm. It's kind of funny, right? It's like that format, releasing stories in little chunks, yeah. it's been around forever, but it's still so effective. It's like those TV shows, you know, where everyone's like on the edge of their seat waiting for the next episode. Totally. The anticipation is like built in, right? Yeah. And Fiona, they definitely use that like from what I gathered Pepper that one seems to be like a historical novel oh. set in colonial India lots of like political intrigue personal drama all that oh so like a historical thriller almost yeah something like that I like oh. that those chapters are intense lots of twists and turns okay what about um Kamara incident what's that one about where does that one go from what I could tell Kumara incident seems to be more like mythology folklore that kind of thing so think like Ancient prophecies, maybe some mystical beings, a hero going on this big quest. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. To uncover some kind of hidden truth, right? Yeah, exactly. It's funny, you know, how these stories, even just like the titles or those little descriptions you gave, they just like immediately spark something. Even if we don't actually read Tommel, there's something there. You yeah. Know? I think it really speaks to like how universal storytelling really is. A hundred percent. Like whether it's historical fiction or sci-fi or like digging into these old myths, it doesn't matter. The power of a good story, it goes way beyond like where you're from or what language you speak. And what's cool is that Anna Canal is like, it becomes this bridge, right? It's bringing those stories to a modern Tamil audience. Totally. And, you know, it actually makes me wonder, have any of our listeners had a similar experience? Yeah. Like, have you ever encountered a piece of literature or art even from a culture that felt really different from yours and then you like connected yeah. with it in this unexpected way it really is isn't it like it makes you think and i okay. bet there are a lot of people out there who've had that kind of experience like getting pulled into a story even if you know at first it feels like it's coming from a different world almost totally like it's those <laughs> moments where you realize no matter where we come from there's this common thread you know, that connects us all through these shared experiences. Exactly. Like you think about it, all those like big universal themes that keep popping up everywhere, right? Love, loss, trying to figure out who you are, that whole clash between like what's always been and what's changing. Those things, they're not limited to like one place or one language. You know what I mean? It's so true. And it's like what I find really interesting about B20 and is how it manages to like bring all those threads together. It's almost like a snapshot, I guess, of a culture, yeah. but grappling with these universal ideas, but in a way that feels very current, very now. And here's the thing. It's not like a finished picture either. Like, remember how they were saying they're open to submissions? They want to hear from new voices. Right, right. It's not just about, like, holding on to this tradition. It's about saying, okay, this is a space for new ideas, new perspectives, new stories. Yeah, like, come on in. The water's fine. Exactly. And that's something I think is really cool, that the language with, like, you know, such deep roots, such a history, it's still evolving, still inspiring new stuff. It's a good reminder, I think, that languages, they're not just like these fixed things. They're alive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They change and grow right along with us. Totally. And you know what? Maybe that's a good thought to leave folks with. We've spent all this time, right, in the pages of Bertu Hongru. We've seen how vibrant Tamil literature is, this whole world where ancient traditions and like that modern energy, they come together. It's been quite a journey. This whole treasury of words thing, it really lives up to the name. It does. And who knows, maybe our little deep dive here, it might inspire some folks out there to go on their own adventures, to explore literature in languages they never even thought about before. There you go. After all, there are all those stories just waiting out there, you know, waiting for us to discover them.